down the street. I saw them and they saw me. What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marf. We have some disturbing stories today, including uh, some very harsh words after China uh, discovered that we have training troops over in Taiwan. This is a big story. Uh, of course, they are going to say a lot about it. So we'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, all right. What is going on? How are you guys doing tonight? It's Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we are going to be talking about a lot, so anybody that is new here, just remember you can go over and get notifications from our website. From marfuglenews.com, you will also see that we take the time before every single show to put every single source on our website. So there is a bibliography that you can actually grab a second device and actually follow along. <clears throat> Our website is very easy to navigate. It is all done uh, by thumbnail. You don't need a crystal ball uh, is the thumbnail for tonight. And again, if you click on that, you will see that we have every single document, video, tweet, article that we are going to show you here today will be available there on the website. That way you know exactly where your news comes from. On, the, on top of that, on the right side, if you do want to support in any way, again, we are independent. We do not have a multi-channel network. Uh, please make sure to go over and check out the right side of the page. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, bring in Dex, my co-host slash internet brother. What is going on, Dex, and how are you doing today? Well, hello. Hello, Fugle fan. You chopped out for a second there. Sorry about that, Dex. Either oh, a little choppy. Sorry about that. Either way. But I'm doing just fine. Uh, okay, well, so uh, again, Dex is going to be helping me out on these stories. Uh, on the bottom, we have also added web-only content. That is basically stuff that is too hot for TV. Uh, we're, today, we're going to talk about a lot, including China basically saying, uh, we'll see if we'll eradicate the intruders in Taiwan. Uh, it is a big deal that, of course, they are, are saying that now they've discovered that we're training troops. I would think that it would have already been known. I thought that we actually covered something similar to that, but I guess... It was talk of actually doing it, <clears throat> and now uh, they are actually saying that they are. Um, Dex, well, I guess we'll go back to it later, but first, it says, Despite warnings, uh, repairs on San Francisco's Millennium Tower caused additional sinking. Now, the reason people pay attention to a lot of this is because, obviously, uh, we had half of a, an apartment complex in uh, Florida collapse, and now there has been a kind of a new focus on older buildings and what's going on with them. It says constructions on a fix for San Francisco's leaning Millennium Tower came to a stop in late August because the fix was actually making the tower sink uh, worse. It says now it appears that some of that damage could have been avoided. Uh, it says that, of course, Millennium Partners wanted to get the thing wrapped up, said Robert Pike, a geotechnical engineer and early critic of the current so-called perimeter pile upgrade. He says that the $100 million plan to shore up the sinking tower should have been stopped months before it was. Certainly by the end of June, it was obvious that there was additional settlement as a result of installing the casings and the piles. Now, we are covering this because this was also some a story that we covered where they were... Uh, Dex, was this the one where there was two different plans in place? Yes. Yes, there were. And, and they were saying, you know, that there's a scenario where this would make it worse. And apparently it is now continuing to sink. And this is not, you know, 
this is not a mid rise. This is a high rise. This is a pretty tall building in, in San Francisco. And, um, you know, it's been leaning for the longest time, but you know, it's for it to be leaning even more and continuing to sink, uh, even as they're trying to fix it makes, uh, brings a lot of concern. I think if you lived in that town. Yeah. It's, uh, especially after what happened in uh, Florida, which people still have questions about, uh, that was a very odd thing as far as this would be a much bigger building as far as if it collapsed or had something happen. Uh, so we'll follow and we'll see what ends up happening. It, of course, people in the in the neighborhood, in fact, somebody from across the street tweeted that they said, uh, I've, I'm just scared to even stay here because we don't know if this thing's going to collapse or not. Most people say that the thing wouldn't just outright collapse. Uh, if any, anything, it would have issues and it would just keep getting worse and worse until uh, eventually, if, if it got wor- you know bad enough, they would have to demolish it. And then uh, we are going to talk about some of the shortages. So we called this, I mean, many people did. The Fugle fam definitely did. Uh, everyone in our audience knows at this point uh, we are now starting to see what is really going on. Uh, I have my own theories, and uh, I think that you know what is happening today is only further cementing where we are heading. You don't need a crystal ball to see what is happening right now. Um, I also have gotten so many emails, and again, please keep them coming. If you have things that are on order from China and they have not left uh, Shenzhen or Gang uh, Gangguang or Gangduang or wherever the the two hubs are. Please let me know. Uh, you know, send us stuff because honestly, uh, it looks like nothing is coming out of China. Uh, they have now separated. You know, they've basically overnight changed their laws. Uh, they have overnight cut uh, entertainment out of a lot of their uh, their provinces. They have cut uh, you know communications. Uh, they have cut gaming communications between the rest of the world. That happened. And now they're making it even farther worse. They're basically cutting any kind of influence from any kind of Western country. Uh, They cut out English teaching. Uh, All of these schools went bankrupt overnight. There was at least two that went bankrupt, you know, in a matter of a week. They could not uh, operate. There are all these foreign citizens that were there that were teaching uh, English legally, and they had their visas for that. Those visas are going to expire at some point because now there's no real no options. They don't want English in their country. So obviously something is happening behind the scenes. So for anybody to come and tell me that, oh, you know, it's all, you know, it, it's it's not going to happen and this and that, I, I, it doesn't matter if it's a, it, the biggest show on earth. Uh, it, the, the last two years should prove to you that, you know, anything is possible. And, it, you know, they were willing to do it. So, uh, a lot of people say, you know, well, why, why would they invest so much in all of these things like the fifth generation of of uh, cell phones and all of this stuff. Why would they invest all these millions and millions of dollars and then just to destroy it or just to take it back over? One thing is if China did invade, say, the U.S. or Australia or the world or we had another world conflict, there's money to be made out of that as well. In fact, that could that could totally outweigh the money that was spent or the local smaller money that was invested in all this different stuff. You You have to also realize... Uh, China does have a lot of investment over here and every other country. The reason why is if you are, uh, since 1979, they allowed their citizens to actually make money. As long as you were good with the government, you could make money there. But guess what? You can't really own anything in China. You only lease things. In fact, you cannot own your own property as a Chinese citizen. You can lease it from, you know, the construction company that owns it, but you can't truly own something. It's not like many places in the world. So they're taking their money and they're investing all over the world, uh, these millionaires and billionaires that did have money, they were buying up everything. What is even crazier, and this is another really great uh, piece that Serpensa did, is that the Chinese were buying all over the world and they were actually taking hold of a loophole that is actually, in theory, a good loophole where they were buying property in different countries and many of their citizens were getting citizenship because of it. If you've not heard of this, if you spend a certain amount of money in some countries, they will actually give you a full-fledged citizenship. What it is, is if you invest in the country so much money, then, you know, obviously you're helping the country's economy. Then they hand you a citizenship. Uh, 85% of those kinds of uh, actual citizenships that were handed out were handed out to Chinese uh, residents. 
So all of those people were actually in from buying property. So, you know, a lot of people know that they have bought up all sorts of real estate as far as uh, they would pay cash. Uh, I think almost everybody has actually experienced this. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody that got outbought uh, their house. They, they purchased, you know, a, say a million dollar house for 1.5 million, just like way over what it is. Uh, and did it cash and they lost the house because somebody, you know, just way overbid it and bought it like that, like it was nothing. Not only this, there's a loophole that uh, essentially no one can access. None of the other countries can access the taxes uh, of the stuff and the incomes of what people are making in China. So these people were buying these $3 million houses and saying that they only make, you know, $300 a year. And guess what? There was no way to prove them wrong. There was no uh, there was no access to uh, what the actual income. So at the same time, so say uh, a Chinese businessman purchases a uh, property for three million dollars or a home in uh, Canada, gains citizenship from it, uh, and then uh, you know might have bought multiple. Then says he makes three hundred dollars. Then also gets all the freebies like uh, health insurance, everything else, and then everyone else in that country ends up uh, paying for you know their health insurance, everything else with their taxes. Ends up pay paying for possible even wel welfare. Uh, there are people that are actually on welfare from this, so th that are you know millionaires that buy million dollar houses, but they can't prove that they're not because they can't access the systems. So this was this was done over the last 10 years. Now China is backing out of the whole capitalism thing. And at the same time, there's these huge connected companies that are telling people to go and invest. What I thought was funny is BlackRock, one of the biggest and largest investment companies in the world, not only had, uh, it, it, you know, told everybody to invest in China, they just happened to be involved in all three of the companies that are uh, putting out what, you know, the stuff that we're all doing right now. I thought that was nuts, or at least two of them. Two of the main companies that are putting out uh, the things that everybody's, you know, required to do. I just thought that was uh, interesting. So there's a lot going on here uh, as far as what, what we're going to talk about with Taiwan, everything else. Nothing is leaving China. Something is going on way bigger than anybody knows. And at this point, it's really hard to debate that. Diaper shortages hits the U.S. amid CV mm -hmm, supply chain issues. It says many American families are having a hard time finding uh, diapers for their infants and toddlers. As the National Diaper Bank Network said, one in three American families are in need of the baby item. It says the network suggested to New York Times that this mm, mm, pandemic impact on global supply chain is likely the reason for the country seeing a diaper shortage. Also, people stocking up. It says companies are facing a labor shortage and difficulty getting imports from the countries that have been placed on a temporary lockdown during uh, this, uh, this, right? It says there's also a backup of cargo ships at California ports, uh, preventing goods from being delivered to stores. Now, BOD and Shan, if you guys don't know, BOD was recently in the hospital for a, quite a while, actually. Uh, her husband and herself, uh, they were part of uh, them and Overland Rob were running part of the California group that we had that were meeting in person and uh, they actually went down to the ports themselves and talked to one of the security checkpoints gentlemen there and he said that they actually have a shortage of chassis and they ended up getting video of that they they uh, ended up kind of pointing it down but getting this this video of them talking about it and saying that they have no chassis so the metal part that these containers go on uh, that and that that was part of the reason why they couldn't you know move or do anything is because they had limited chassis for the trucks to take them out and I just thought that was super weird it sounds like the gentleman who was even a security checkpoint person there at the port uh, even thinks that it almost it seems on purpose so that again that is not from us that is uh, again that's from somebody who is working at the port right now uh, so that, you know, that's something that just really kind of gets gets my goat. When they are putting uh, National Guard all over the place to replace people, why aren't they uh, replacing these drivers? We have tons of National Guard qualified drivers that can even drive big rigs. They're qualified for uh, military vehicles that big and even probably have that same kind of license. So why, you know, why are we having these massive shortages of everything? And it hasn't even gotten to the worst parts yet.
So diapers, that's another thing. I am personally experiencing this. I could not find the size. Uh, both my daughter and my huge son, who's a one years old and wearing the same diapers as my two-year-old, uh, it was Im almost impossible to size fi uh, find size five diapers for like a week. Finally, they restocked and we grabbed a bunch because that's what we had to do. So, and then of course, toys may be harder to get in time for the holidays due to the global supply chain delays. A lot of these toys are from the Asian countries. They're from China. They're from all over the place. Uh, Dex, I mean, obviously we could see uh, people trying to get, you know, gifts for their kids, but there aren't any gifts to get. We're going to see empty, empty shelves. Yeah, I mean, gone, gone are the days of American-made toys, right? So we know all these are either sitting on container ships or not been produced yet and shipped. And so it's hard to find. And everything is seemingly falling into this category, right? It, it really does. And honestly, um, I, if you are going to get a gift for your kids, uh, I would say next payday, uh, try to get a gift early. It's October, so it's not you know fully hit yet. And, uh, you know, just think ahead because that same gift, say, especially if it's something that they really want, it won't be available around Christmas. And if it is, it's going to be, you know, super overpriced at an American warehouse that's uh, charging you an Amazon fee or some, you know, 50% fee. Just so you know, like any uh, small seller that sells on Amazon or eBay has to pay 30% fees. Uh, my friend who owns a business that does this kind of stuff, uh, is, the fees are ab ab abnormally high. That's why you'll see something you know the retail price is, say, you know, $25, but it's being sold for 60 or 70 Because for them to even make a profit or to even make it worthwhile, they have to add that 30% in. It's huge, huge fees that they're charged uh, to sell stuff there. So it's going to get even worse when there's no product to sell. So this is just a, a warning. I mean, this isn't... Uh, not kids not having toys at Christmas is going to be uh, something that really hurts the Fugal fam and everybody in it. So get your stuff early. Go to your targets and WalMarts before uh, it, you know it, before everything is empty. It's guaranteed, uh, especially for toys and products like this or anything that you really want to get your uh, spouse anything. Get it now and then put it in the closet somewhere because it's not going to be there. And then world food prices hit ten year peak. F A O. It says that world food prices rose for a second consecutive month in September to reach a 10-year peak driven by gains for cereals and vegetable oils, the United Nations Food Agency said on Thursday. The Rome-based Food uh, and Agriculture Ag uh, Organization, F -O -F -A -O, uh, also projected record global cereal production in 2021, but said that this would be outpaced uh, by the forecast consumption. FAO's food price index, which tracks international prices of the most globally traded food commodities, averaged 130 points last month, the highest reading since September of 2011, according to the agency's data. The figure compared with a revised 128.5 for August, and the August figure was previously given 127.4. Basically, this, it, 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 everything has gone up. Everything has been consumed more and more. And of course, prices and the actual stock has gone down. Agricultural commodity prices have risen, uh, risen steeply in the past uh, year, fueled by harvest setbacks and Chinese demand. Chinese demand. On a year-in-year -year basis, prices were up 32.8% uh, in September. So... All of the major things that you probably get on a daily basis or you eat with your family, everything is becoming more expensive. This is only going to get worse. And I hope people yeah. realize that, you know, you can you can help yourself by, you know, you can help yourself by thinking ahead. What was that, Dex? Yeah, I was going to say we went grocery shopping today, uh, one of our stores, and it was clear that from the last time we went shopping to this time that prices had gone up. On a lot of things, um, some things they went up like like about thirty percent. Um, some cases a little bit more. Uh, and then the other thing that we noticed is that the rationing is back in. Um, you can't buy more than two paper products anymore, which is clearly a rationing uh, thing. So we saw that at both Costco and our uh, grocery store, two different locations. You were not allowed to buy more. At one place, you were not about allowed to buy more than one paper product, and the other place was no more than two of any type of paper product. So if you wanted uh, toilet paper and paper towels and 
uh, napkins, well, you had to pick two. You couldn't have three. And we're going to see it on water and, and essentials. Make sure to have extra stuff around. Uh, you know, watch channels like Survival Living. Watch channels like Alaska Prepper. These are all channels that are really good at, uh, you know, preparing you. Uh, you can also prepare on a dime. Uh, think about stuff like going to the food bank. Uh, well, you still can. Uh, I, today, by the way, I had a, a pretty freaky moment once again. I happened to be down uh, uh, downtown area when it was the start of the game, and I did not realize it. I was actually on the phone with Udex, and two jets flew between the skyscrapers. And we were just talking about how China and everything that was going on, how China just threatened and they just found out this huge thing about Taiwan. Did I, I mean, was that not freaky? Like, we were talking about it, and then two jets fly by so loud... What what was my reaction? Oh yeah, you were you were kind of freaked out. So uh, of course uh, the first thing I checked because I, I was in there last week and I, uh, you know, was there last week and figured out it was the Seahawks almost right away. I looked and saw that the game started at uh, I think it was five twenty uh, Pacific, right? So it was right at that minute. It was like five nineteen when it went by. So I knew it was the Seahawks, but again. It doesn't matter. That sound, when it, it reverberates through a downtown area, it made me think of uh, the, what movie was that that was on um, Netflix where uh, the, the power goes out. It has, fo- what was it, Forrest Griffin or... Um, ah, not Forrest Griffin. That's the boxer. Uh, who is Who's the gentleman? Whitaker. With the Forrest Whitaker. It had Forrest Whitaker and that other guy, and it's the end, and... You think that it might be some sort of solar event and then a volcano goes off like uh, I think it, it's uh, in the movie Yellowstone and the power goes out countrywide. In that scene, they show the jets going by the window and that was kind of their, their way of saying, yeah, this isn't normal. There's F-16s flying, you know, flying by the, the windows, breaking windows. That's how close it was. It was really, really freaking uh, scary. The thing is, is one of these days, it's not going to be a joke. One of these days, it's going to go, you know, that close to downtown. And then all of a sudden, poof, you hear a boom. And then if you're that close, hopefully you're not close, uh, you will feel it. So if people think that we are never going to be invaded here in the U.S. or other countries, I would say it's just a matter of really time. Hopefully it's in 200 years from now or hopefully it's it's never, right? That's what we would like to think. But at this point, right now, they are preparing hardcore for one singular uh, event, which is a conflict with China and possibly Russia and now possibly India. And I'm Pakistan and all of these other countries that are teaming up. America is running out of everything. The global supply chain is slowing down at the very moment when Americans are demanding that it go into overdrive. So it says that uh, this gentleman says, I visited CVS last week to pick up some at-home COVID-19 tests and they had been sold out for a week. An employee told me, uh, so I asked about paper towels. Says, we're out of those too, he said. Try Walgreens. I drove to Walgreens that had uh, paper towels, but when I asked the pharmacist to fill some very common prescriptions, uh, they told me the store had run out. Try the Target up the road, he suggested. Target's pharmacy had the meds, but its front area was alarmingly barren, like the canned food section of a grocery store one hour before a hurricane makes landfall. It says, this is the economy now. One-hour errands are now multi-hour odysseys. Next day deliveries are becoming day after next. And of course, the car part you need, it will take an extra week. Sorry. The book you were looking for, come back in November. The baby crib you bought, make it December. Eyeing a new home improvement job that requires requires uh, seven construction workers? Haha, ha, pray for 2022. The U.S. economy isn't experiencing a downturn akin to the 1970s period of stagflation. This is something different and quite strange. Americans are settling into a new phase of the economy, which GDP is growing, but we're also suffering from a dearth of shocking array of things. Test kits, car parts, semiconductors, ships, shipping containers, workers. This is the everything shortage. The everything shortage is uh, not the result of one big bottleneck in. 
say, Vietnamese factories or the American trucking industry, we are running low on supplies of all kinds due to the variable hydra of bottlenecks. Almost everything is being bottlenecked. And now it's been, it seems about a month that nothing has uh, transpired between China and us. And people are still not figuring out what's going on here. It says the, and they, they, you think that uh, they're solid, nothing leaving. People are uh, emailing in droves with proof that th their product uh, was going through all the normal processes. And then one day, in fact, I hope that you guys all send me this because I think that a certain day is when it happened and just boom. I would love to know what time that everybody's package just stopped moving through all the systems because now everything is stuck. It's just stopped at Shenzhen. If you did get something, it may have gone through some of the other uh, the other kind of ports or, or the things. The two main ones are just like nothing. All these people are sending uh, screenshots of it sitting there. And normally it would sit there, it would go through customs process, and it would take a few days. Uh, but this is, this is different. This is like three weeks in a row just sitting there. So once the product they ordered from Amazon or wherever else went there, it just stopped on there. And they're saying that's because there's not enough drivers to pick it up from the port, and that's why it's all piling up. It's piling up because it takes a long time for those ships to get over. But where are the ships that are leaving? Why are there not ships leaving? You think they're not leaving because when they get there, they'll have to wait out in port? I don't know about that. I think that uh, the, the cost of having them sit there is just as bad as having them sit uh, unloaded somewhere, you know, sitting there. This yeah, is, and the go ahead. The, the um, shipping container in this article, he talks about the cost. He says before uh, the the pandemic, reserving a container that holds roughly thirty five thousand books only cost twenty five hundred dollars. Now it's twenty five thousand dollars just for that container. So imagine how much that jacks up the price, right? Just to get you know that container, that's a huge increase. I, I don't know if you absorbed what Dex just said from $2,500 for a container to get it across to 25,000. That's like you're paying some, you know, uh, it's CD guy in an alleyway and you're doing illegal things. You, you're paying to, to move, you know, uh, nuclear waste or something. That does not seem right. So I hope people realize this is way more serious than anyone is talking about. Uh, they have everyone distracted with 50,000 different things. We're all, of course, going to be watching this, watching that, watching this, watching that. Uh, meanwhile, things are actually starting. This is this is the beginning. And this is, again, it's already been in, a, it's been a process. It's been years leading up to this. But everything has snapped. They have some sort of secret at the very top levels and they cannot release it. Something happened and they are preparing for it. I think both sides know that everyone everyone will panic when they find out what you know how bad it really is. It says the most dramatic expression of this snarl is the purgatory of loaded cargo containers stacked on ships bobbing off of the coast of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Just as normal traffic jam consists of too many drivers trying to use too few lanes. The traffic jam at California ports has been exacerbated by extravagant consumer demand slamming into a shortage of trucks, truckers, and port workers. Because ships can't be unloaded, not enough empty containers are in transit to carry all the stuff that consumers are trying to buy. So the world is getting a lesson in Economy 101. High demand plus limited supply equals prices spiraling to the moon. Again, uh, container that holds roughly 35,000 books, 2,500 bucks, $25,000. That's a pretty big uh, upkeep here. So just remember, uh, m remember, get your stuff as soon as you can. And that includes books. <laughs> uh, that's just one example, but anything you put in that container, anything. And I don't, 
uh, I, I know that most people do not realize how much is actually made in China. Even if they think it's an American made product, a lot of the components are made in China. There's examples of this all over the place. You'll, you'll think you're getting uh, an American product, but uh, the components of it are actually made in China. Clothes, pretty much everything. Bill Sweeney, thank you so much for your support early on in the show. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting Independent. Without you guys, uh, again, by the way, um, someone commented about two or three shows back that uh, the show had a bunch of ads. We don't decide that. Yeah, uh, on especially on some shows. So just so you know, they passed a thing that basically, if, even if it goes yellow or even red, or it says you know not suitable, uh, they can still put uh, you know ads on that. In fact, even if you are not monetized, they can do it on small creators that have you know say no people. They can put ads on that. They uh, they actually pass that through the uh, the YT kind of rules. So again, I but we can try to go in and reduce the amount. We don't decide where they go or how many goes in there, especially sometimes when it's on a video that we're, we don't, we don't make uh, something from it. So if it does go completely, you know, red, then we don't get that, but they, st they can still do it. Uh, pretty crazy to, if you ask me, but again, um, thank you. Let, let us know if that happens. Pam, Ben, thank you all. And uh, thank you. Tell us and help us. You and yours be safe, Marv. Love. Uh, Pam, Ben, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for supporting Independent. Bachelor for Life says, keep on keeping on, Marf and Dex. My son has started a YouTube channel. Please show love, Fam. Bachelor for Life. Okay, I was like, uh, how old is your son? Um, I will check it out. Bridget Lasner Dolan, thank you so much for pledging uh, on Patreon uh, yesterday, in fact. And then I survived. Will you? Thank you so much for being the last one out yesterday. Uh, everybody over on DLive, I appreciate you guys. Uh, if you want to help us and help yourself in another way, I would highly, highly recommend. With all of these shortages, it's pretty much a no-brainer. People should get on board before they have to. Um, you know, we've said it for three years. We said it before CV originally hit that people needed to have extra stuff. When CV first hit, there was nothing on the shelves. There was lines a mile long to go into Costco's. Uh, I, in fact, I reported that I was there, uh, you know, getting drone shots that looked like, uh, it was the end of the world. But again, that was just, uh, the first time it's going to happen again. We're going to have more hacks that shut down infrastructure. We're going to have things that shut down gas. We're going to have things that shut down uh, food supply chains. We have not even got there yet. We haven't even had a major, major, major disaster yet. And if you think that a major disaster is not going to happen, it doesn't matter where you live. Something will. It's, a, it's really a matter of law. It's almost Murphy's. It's a matter of time. It's Murphy's law. If you're in Australia, UK, the US, you should have extra stuff. Now, like I've always said, if you don't have uh, money to do a service like My Patriot Supply and get your food, then try to watch people like Alaska Prepper, Survival Living, that tell you how to actually uh, survive on a dime. Everybody should be doing this kind of thing. Everybody should have extra stuff. Right now, especially... When they're telling uh, people and neighbors on Facebook to tell them if they know somebody who's too prepared. That's weird. And now you'll see in a, a bit here, obviously things are going to get worse. And if you are prepared, you don't have to be afraid. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can end up getting a discount through our code. It, we send you to them and then they give us a small commission for sending you to them. Again, it's marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can get everything from iodine pills to three months supplies of food. Again, that three months supply is now $100 off and they're still shipping it out. That's the thing. They might stay open for as long as ever, but who knows? Maybe our whole shipping industry goes bad. We'll talk about the whole government shutdown and everything else that's going on, but uh, I hope that everybody, you know, if even if you don't uh, end up doing this, uh, you need to try to have extra water on hand. DHS itself has told you to get six months to a year of food just in case we lose power. Why are they doing that? Why are they doing all these practices? Well, they're preparing. Why aren't we? 
things like Hurricane Katrina happened. And look what happened. Where did the officials go? They left their posts and they went and saved their own family. So again, it, it's not a scary thing if you are prepared. That's where it takes the fear out. That's marfuglenews.com slash prep. Dex, let's talk about Italy. Italy uh, basically is having, we're having all of these freak events. And now we have another one. Seems like the last three years we've had freak events all over the world, but especially we keep hearing Italy, Greece, uh, France. We keep hearing these uh, these same places keep getting these weird freak events. Well, yeah, and it's it, we were just talking. Uh, I think it was yesterday about Birmingham, Alabama, getting like eight inches of rain, which is a lot in a short amount of time, and having flash flooding, which is you know short term flooding, uh, but you know still dangerous and a big event. But this is thirty four inches of rain. In 24 hours and, and that's and, and it's a continental record as the headline says but that's a big deal that's a lot uh that is a lot of rain in Pe one time period well when and people think of of 34 inches they think oh that's about three feet of rain that's three feet of rain spread out over hundreds of miles or even if it's 10 miles think of a 10 mile area with three feet of rain. Think about how much water that is. That's incredible. That is a freak event. This is biblical flooding. I wonder what, you know, I, actually, I wonder what Jacob Israel, I wonder if there's any biblical significance to this area of Italy um, having this kind of flood. It says the Bormida de Spigno River in Cairo, Montanant, uh, Liguria, Italy rose uh, to its banks October 4th after Liguria received half of a year's worth of rain in 12 hours. Parts of North, uh, northern Italy are recovering from a historic deluge earlier this week that produced a new continent-wide record for rainfall over a 12-hour period. It left one city with nearly a year's worth of rainfall in one day. That's incredible. And then, of course, we have Google YT to prohibit ads and monetization on climate denial content. So your favorite people, uh, the people that you might watch uh, all of, you know, I, I would believe like uh, Mike from around the world and others, um, anybody including our, some of the stories we've covered. Some of the, the folks that you know may just get affected. So here's where everybody needs to know kind of about the ecosystems. I hope that those creators and when, when this happens and it's happening across the board to a bunch of people, it's happening to everybody. Remember that those people, if they do have some sort of external uh, means, if they have, uh, I hopefully they have good products that they believe in that's the ecosystem help support them you know through their affiliates there's going to be multiple channels and who knows uh, what do they consider this right so it, it, basically anything that uh, goes against they um, they're, they're going to remove the stuff on it says Google and YT on Thursday announced a new policy that prohibits deniers from being able to monetize their content on its platforms via ads or creator payments. This is, that's big. Uh, that means what I've even seen happen is the day before, uh, you know, these platforms pay once a month. The day before, if they cut that, it's gone. They they don't even there's it's not like oh you earn this much prior it's just gone. We are in we are literally in a, a planet that depends on a few websites and uh, those few websites are not even considered what they should be right. That's freaking freaky. So remember to support uh, anybody and everybody you know through the ecosystem that you know how. And then, of course, man plunges nine stories from 
New Jersey high rise lands on a BMW and survives. I don't know if this is going to be an ad for a BMW or for that uh, that man's strength. It says a man plunged nine stories, so over 90 feet. New Jersey landed on a BMW and miraculously survived, according to stunning photos and a witness. The man crashed through the roof of the Beamer parked uh, below 26 Journal Square at 10.20 a.m. It says when he stood up with a broken arm and asked what happened, onlooker Christina Smith told the Post. I heard a big boom and I didn't think it was a person at first, said Smith. The back of the window of the car just busted out, exploded when a guy jumped out and started screaming. His arm was all twisted. I was like, oh my God, I was shocked. It was like being in a movie, said Smith, who works in sales and had been strolling to a nearby McDonald's. The dude broke his arm, falling nine stories. Dex, that's insane. Yeah, and I think we have the photo on the next uh, on the next screen. But yeah, you can see where he actually landed. Um, and it, it, obviously the roof, you know, absorbed his fall, which makes sense. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of crazy. Look at that. And he's still wearing his mask. Why did he... How did he get so far away from the building? Did he jump? It sounds like he didn't know what the heck happened. And uh, I guess that would be a thing for how these new cars crumple. They're designed yeah, to they're, just... They're still investigating it, like whether he jumped, fell, or was pushed, but yeah. Does he work for any of the... Any of the tech companies? Because <laughs> right now I heard that they're uh, watching employees, making sure they don't uh, say anything. That is freaky. Nine stories. That's, that is something that even if you land in a vat or something that is pretty hard to believe that's kind of like I, I i don't know if this is actually true i heard that this was a true story uh dex wasn't it rolex or something or one of the watch companies they used a guy who fell and his uh parachute didn't go off or something and he landed in a vat of like literal poo or something and he ended up surviving a, a fall from a plane and his Rolex was key, was still ticking. Or was it Timex or one of those? Is that a real story? Does anybody know? I heard I that. I have not heard that. That's crazy, though. Maybe. I, I'm thinking the only way that could happen is if the parachute didn't like fully deploy and slowed him down enough or something. Because I would see if you hit water or anything, it's going to be like you're hitting a brick at that, at that, you know, jumping out of a plane. Let's see here. I love Jesus forever. Thank you for your uh, your support over on D Live. Griffel, Truth Wins, Viral Execution. Thanks for following. Uh, we've got John Lay relives. What's going on? Jack Tronics, E Sheets, Scooby Doo, Lisa K twenty three. Thank you for your massive support. And uh, Renee three seven seven. Thanks so much for your love for our country. Uh, thanks, Renee, and thank you for popping in. I heard three banks in the UK went offline at six thirty a.m. Was that today? That's creepy. Uh, Kishara, Truth Wins, Crop Duster. Code King, thanks for hosting. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate anybody that hosts uh, host our channel on theirs. Thank you, Code King. I appreciate that. I hope you're watching. And then uh, make sure to go check, check them out. And then just go over to the main one. Time takes a licking and keeps on ticking. I don't know. I I remember seeing that. Let's see here. Something stinks about that story. Skullburger rocks. That's good. Make sure to thank your mods for keeping it a positive place. Remember, uh, you could you guys can uh, debate with each other if it's friendly, but if it's like that sarcastic, just uh, you know, I'm right, you're wrong kind of debate, keep it positive. Let's push each other up. Uh, people are divided right now and that's on purpose. If you do not realize that you are being divided on purpose, then you might need to do some more research before you fit in. Everybody needs to be, uh, you know, realizing at this point that the, the person next to you in the chat room is not, not the bad guy. And then of course the world is waking up to Iran's 
drone threat. It says, drones are an emerging threat to the Middle E, and 2019, I used a combination of drones and cruise missiles to attack the giant Alpakik oil uh, processing facility in Arabia. It says, using precision strikes to send a message that I country's drones could not strike at will across the region, Uh, Or, yeah, it says, could not strike across the region and destabilize economies and countries. Now the I country's drones are again in the spotlight after reports of the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, and other media that the WSJ article noted that the I country's drones are reshaping the security situation in the region. It references the July attack on a tanker in the Gulf of Oman. Of course, that took uh, two lives of uh, two crew members. And it says it also noted that the I country has trafficked drone technology to Hamas in Gaza. It says it's May conflict with the is country, right? Hamas used I country style drones for the first time. Fox News report looks at reports of I country dissidents and I will use drones and destabilize the region. A third report at the National Interest it notes that the I country might target Al Hahir base in northern Kurdistan. One thing it says that US uh, forces are allegedly present. So when these things kind of come out, it's almost like they're going to tell us in a, in a couple weeks we'll see it and they'll say, "Oh, well this was already reported. We they had intelligence." Dex don't watch. This is actually going to happen. And they put it in the back of people's minds, so then it does happen. Exactly. I mean, the, the, if this is in the forefront in the, in the reporting right now, then pay attention because, you know, we haven't heard much about them since, like, 2019. Not them, not the country, but this whole drone issue. Uh, but now we'll probably hear more of it, and it'll become a, a big issue. And, and the thing that I keep harping on is if we start to see – you know, conflict on one end of the world, we're going to see something on the other end of the world. And this is probably the location we're going to see it uh, in addition to Taiwan, right? So we've got Ukraine, you've got the ME, and then you've got Taiwan as three potential hotspots. Yeah, it, we, we're now we're at uh, multiple. You have, yeah, you have, of course, multiple borders kind of lined up. Almost every country is drilling for a massive conflict. Don't know how you could possibly get closer. Uh, it says that I States TV reported that on Thursday uh, that speedboats belonging to the country's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard have intercepted a United United States vessel in the Persian Gulf. A U.S. Navy spokesman said that he was not aware of any such encounter at sea over the past few days. Uh, the region remains on edge after the I country's escalating nuclear program. Talks in Vienna to revive Tehran's now tattered 2015 accord with the world powers have stalled since June, with no date set for their resumption. It says that the uh, Thursday's I report aired footage that the TV station said was filmed from one of the guard speedboats. It shows a vessel with a U.S. flag and several personnel on board as the speedboat appears to be chasing it. So one thing, Dex, couldn't things like this happen and then they cover it up and say, oh, no, it didn't happen uh, because they know it's an it, it could cause an international incident? Yeah, certainly. I mean, a, a lot of this information is considered intel and whether or not they want to put it out or not put it out or uh, deflect it or you know hide it is potentially part of the strategy too, right? Well, yeah, and then, of course, anything like this could be a uh, grounds for a full-scale conflict. But what ends up happening is they try every outlet they can. Sometimes they'll even just say it didn't happen. Uh, and then when they do that, the other country knows that they're basically saying, you know, hey, we're going to let this one go or something. Maybe the I country is trying to start a conflict. Uh you know, why did they end up, did this actually happen? Uh, this also could be grounds for a Fantastic Freddy. Uh, dress a boat up, put a, a certain flag on it, and then then uh, your own guys go and take it. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a pra- a football practice, right? You put, uh, you put, it's uh, skins versus shirts, right? But it's all the same team. Hopefully you guys get that. 
My name is Tom Holman. I'm the former ICE director and President Donald Trump. And I'm here to ask America to wake up. You can protect yourself and at the same time protect this great nation. The threat of electromagnetic pulse is real. EMP. If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's a matter of life and death. I recently partnered with a Midwest company, Veteran Home, that has developed a device you can hook up to your home or your vehicle to protect you against the EMP. I highly encourage you to go to EMPShield.com and research this device. Again, it will protect you in the long term, protect this great nation. Thank you. So that is a, a word from one of our sponsors. That's Tom Homan. Of course, all of the government and military are using certain devices. Again, EMP Shield has directly worked with agencies like DHS, DOD, and then of course on the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. If you do want to protect yourself and do what they're doing, I highly recommend it. When they are preparing for themselves, obviously they have more information than us. All we can do is really look at what they're doing and try uh, to copy our defenses. Nobody else is going to save you from an EMP. Nobody else is going to, uh, nobody's going to come and, and give you a car to drive home after an EMP or a CME strikes. We have already had during the 25th cycle of uh, this, this new solar cycle, we've already had more than what they had predicted. It's already more uh, it increased and insane than they thought it was going to be. We've had several solar flares, as the caller uh, last night even said, that have you know barely missed us. And if they did hit us, it would have knocked out every grid on the planet. Uh, now they even know that it, even if a big CME hits, there's no real place on Earth that's safe. Uh, they proved that back in like 2015 or 2000. It was either 2006 or the 2015 event where they thought that the bottom half of the planet would be safe. And uh, down in like South Africa or someplace else, they were having things happen that they didn't even think were possible. Uh, where the telephone poles were exploding and things like that. So I would highly recommend you know, end up, go and research uh, protecting yourself against this. If you have a vehicle, if you work far from home, uh, if you have a vehicle that can be affected by a CME or EMP, you should have one of uh, these devices uh, wired in. You can do it yourself. Again, the vehicle version takes, you know, 10 minutes or less to put in. As far as the home version, there's a home version. There is, uh, of course, versions for everything, motorcycle, RV, uh, ham radio, pretty much anything that you need to stay on generators you can get one for and you can get $50 off through the use of our uh, link again go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP and then on top of that you will get uh, our discount on top of any sale they're ever doing so remember that stacks so you'll start getting $50 off per device and then that could stack on whatever else is there sometimes they have 20 50 where wherever on, uh, in addition that's something we were grandfathered in uh, because we we got with them before they had all of these crazy huge government contracts. These are all handmade in Kansas. So if you want to talk about you know awesome product, veteran owned and made in America, boom, you got it. And they ship internationally. Again, go over and check it out, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Don't be and left in parts. the dust. Adam, their parts are even made in America. Everything inside it made in America. That's what that's what I was. I, that's what I was mentioning earlier. There's another. There's actual. Um, somebody said something to me in one of the comments and said, "You know, all uh, it was. It was different. It was. Um, it was a personal. It was like a personal thing about uh, video game consoles or something." And they said, "Well, that's made here." And I said, "No, all of the components are made in China. Uh, IKEA stuff." Right? You think, oh, Ikea is Swedish. Almost everything is made in China. That's why they have nothing in their stores right now. All of the, the components that go into what... Ikea designs the stuff, but Ikea doesn't make it. It's all made in China. You can grab your closest Ikea furniture and look where it says it's made in. It says made in China. It says CIA creates new mission and centers focused on China and technology. CIA director William Burns announced a series of organizational changes intended to hone the agency's focus on key national security challenges, including the launch of two new mission centers. 
one focused on China and another dedicated to transitional and technological threats. The China Mission Center will further strengthen our collective work on the most important geopolitical threat we have faced in the 21st century, an increasingly adversarial Chinese government. That was Burns uh, in a statement on Thursday. The Transitional and Techno uh, Technology Mission Center will focus on foreign technological development alongside issues like... Okay, this is where things just start getting weird. Change, right? And global health, uh, the CIA said in a press release detailing the changes. Dex, doesn't it seem kind of funny how... All these changes happen at the same time, and they happen at the same time that major companies that we know about that are considered, you know, almost monopolies are doing the same kind of changes. It's almost like they're all on the same team. Oh, no, this is not coordinated at all, is it? No. <laughs> well, you know, the other interesting thing, aside from those topics there <laughs> that they're focusing on, uh, and obviously the big focus on China, uh, they actually uh, took two of these uh, groups that they were, um, these mission centers, as they call them. One was on the I country and the other was on NK. And they reabsorbed them into another group. So in other words, they said, we're not going to focus so much on uh, NK. Um, and we're going to fold that stuff in to a larger group. But we're going to make this larger group now about China. So I don't know what to make of that other than it's, you know, it's up to the leadership there and how they want to, how they want to divide and, and manage their, their organization. But, you know, for them to, you know, blatantly come out and say, Hey, we're not focusing on NK, or at least we're taking that center and uh, absorbing it into another group. Now um, it's kind of interesting because we know that NK has been saber rattling like crazy for the last month, two months, it seems like, you know, a matter of fact, we haven't heard anything this week, but last week and the week before and the week before that, it was, you know, nonstop NK. So, and, and we know that'll probably be one of the fronts for, um, you know, activity from our I think, adversaries, I, I think China it's and because, Russia. I think it's because they are an arm of China now. Uh, Kim, who we still don't know if he's even alive, if you don't know about what has happened in the last year and a half with uh, NK, uh, with the Korea from the north, something is happening. The, the sister is speaking, doing all the speaking for the country. That's just unheard of. They don't respect uh, women in that culture. They don't consider her a god. You know, they, they consider Kim Jong. And Kim Jong has had people that look like him, and, you know, even mainstream is looking, and they're going, "What? who is this guy with the purple patch on the back of his head? That's new. Why, why does he look 15 pounds uh, thinner? Every world leader has exact clones. I mean, not clones, but uh, what do you call them? Lookalikes. There are people that have actually been employed by the White House that look like T-Man, that look like, you know, Bush, that look like Barack. There were people that do, they, they actually get paid just because they were born and they look exactly like the person because they have uh, decoys. Everything in the U.S. Uh, United States is set up that way, too. Um, I don't know if they go as far as putting those decoys on, um, you know, Air Force One. There's always two Air Force Ones. There's always two Mercuries. There's always these things because what ends up happening is uh, there's always two up in there. There's always two beasts, uh, the limos, because then they always have redundancy. They, always, you know, you don't know wh where uh, the president truly is, right? Other countries do this, too. So we might be looking at uh, Kim, Kim Jong, uh, a lookalike or somebody who sounds alike. They might be uh, using an audio program. Now, digitally, they can make anybody and it looks real. They can make them look and talk and speak like the person, especially if you use kind of crappier uh, video quality. If you have uh, 4K of Kim Jong, then you might be able to tell like, oh, that might look like CGI. But if you, you know, pretend like they don't have the best quality or if you're 720p or something like that, you can you can make Barack look like he's saying that, hey, you know, 
I just got reinstated. The current prez has been destroyed and, and they asked me to take over the country and you would believe it if they, if they did that video, uh, especially low quality. Well, that's kind of what's coming out of NK right now. We don't know what the hell is going on with Kim. They said that he had surgery and that he possibly died. And then for a couple days it was up in the air. And then they said, now they say that there's been videos of him, but the videos of him, you know, is he speaking in those videos? Uh, is there anything that actually proves the time period? Uh, even if it does, is it a look like? Why is his speaker, uh, his sister speaking so much? Even Dennis Rodman, who's a close friend with him, said, "If hey, if the sister starts talking in public, which that was before his sister ever talked, then you know something's wrong. It was like clockwork. His sister starts being the mouthpiece. So maybe NK is just an arm of China now. So they're rolling uh, I country and NK, and they're saying, we don't, need, we don't need to worry about them. We already took them out. We took, maybe we took Kim out or something. We need to worry about uh, China. Who knows what happened? One of the Navy's uh, prized Sea Wolf class submarines has suffered an underwater collision. Oh, really? USS Connecticut's uh, nuclear reactor was unaffected by the undersea accident, but the Navy won't say what exactly the submarine hit. Maybe it was a megalodon, huh? It said the USS Connecticut, one of the U.S. Navy's highly advanced and secretive nuclear powered Sea Wolf class submarines, is on its way back to port after suffering an underwater collision. The service says that there was uh, no life-threatening injuries among the members of Connecticut's crew as a result of the accident. The submarine itself is in a safe and stable condition. This is another thing where it's like, what actually happened here? The submarine itself is, uh, is okay, and it says, uh, the USNI was the first to report this. Uh, which occurred on October 2nd, the Navy would not say where the submarine was at the time of collision beyond international waters somewhere in the Indo-Pacific region, or what it hit. The service also said that the Connecticut was now headed to a port in the U.S. 7th Fleet Area of Responsibility, uh, which includes the Western Pacific Ocean, a significant portion of the Indian Ocean, as well as various bodies of water uh, between the U.S. 7th Fleet and has its main headquarters in Japan. Uh, Sounds to me like it was near, uh, it could have been anywhere near the um, South China Seas, right? In that area. Could it so have? I wonder if something, something actually happened there. Could it have hit another Chinese sub and they don't want to talk about it? I mean, how, how, they have the most advanced technology. They're not going to hit a wall. They're not going to hit an iceberg, right? What could they hit? Well, something that maybe is cloaked. Maybe something that has technology that uh, prevents radar from seeing it. That's what confuses me here. They, this sub just won't just hit uh, a buoy or something, won't hit uh, a chunk. Th these have super advanced... It, it's like they have cameras, but they don't need them. Uh, they have... <clears throat> oh, Actually, anybody that's been on a, a recent sub that is military here, because we've got tons of military, I'm sure we've got tons of Navy. Do we have any people that have served on a sub? Would, do you think that they would just hit a wall or something? Do you think that they don't... Uh, do they know their way around? Can they see everything around them at this point? Especially with the new, the newest technology, which we've covered, the technology that virtually maps out everything around them. The one thing that I could see happening, though, is them hitting another sub. Or would that even be possible? Somebody says, uh, well, Seth Covington says, Satanists believe in God. They are just rebel rejects. James Fox says, thanks for bringing so much information. Oh, well, thanks for, thanks for uh, listening to us, I guess. You know, it's, it's a blessing just to have an uh, audience. Alex Aguilar, Marf, do something about your mods. Discriminating and timing out those who praise Satan. All hail. Uh, Alex, I can't help you out there. That's like, why? That's, uh, to be honest, I don't know. I th thought that I would never uh, discriminate against anybody, but like, that just seems like a troll. That just, that's, I'm sorry. 
I can't help you there. In fact, uh, I mean, you know, if, if somebody who's like borderline Wiccan or something or has like that, you know, keep, but to say praise something like that, you know, sorry. It is our house. It's like, uh, this is like, if somebody came into my house saying that, I would, I would tell them, you know, hey, you're not really welcome here. We own the channels, therefore we own the chats. So when somebody says, oh, it's free speech or something like that, it's like you walking into somebody's living room and saying that. You can say that all you want. You can say that and go out to the front of my house and say that. But don't do it in my living room. You know, don't put your feet up on my coffee table. It's kind of like that. Now, I respect the fact that you can go out and say that and go out and say that uh, to a whole audience of people. But if you're going to say that over and over again in, in my chat, that's not something that, you know, that we would want out there. And then Bill Sweeney, thank you so much for your support. Again, I can't support that. I guess why would why would somebody worship that? But I, I respect your right to do what you want. Just don't do it in my living room. If the CEO of the sub gets relieved, <clears throat> you know it was a rock, etc. If it was a drone miner sub, he won't get relieved. Pay attention to that. Delaware Sasquatch, that's actually a really great point. So, Dex, don't you think that's a good point? If the captain gets fired or gets, you know, taken out, then it was probably something dumb. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to watch this and see what happens. If he gets promoted, then who knows? <laughs> you know, then that's a whole different story. That's like, then he very well could uh, could have saved lives or something or averted a planetary catastrophe. Remember the last time that we had a sub-related kind of incident? All of the countries went to their emergency meetings. That was scary. Something happened there. And then at the funerals for the 17 uh, Russian aquanauts that perished, they said that they died averting a planetary catastrophe. Taiwan seeks international support after Chinese incursions. Australian, uh, uh, it, it says, yeah, I'm sorry, Taiwan will ensure regional peace and stability and seek to work with other like-minded democracies. President Tsai Zing Wen told senior French and Australian dignitaries on Thursday, days after a dramatic spike in tensions with China. The trips by four French senators and former Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott come after four straight days beginning last Friday of mass Chinese Air Force incursions into, of course, Taiwan's air defense zone. It says democratically ruled Taiwan has sought to support from other uh, democracies, especially the United States and its allies, amid the growing military and political pressure from China, which, uh, of course, China claims Taiwan as its own territory. Now, it seems to me like there's a little bit of lack of trust in, in our ability to do something. So they're reaching out to try to find as many uh, allies as they can because they're going to need them. Yeah, they're worried that we're not going to come to their aid. They're, they're calling out to the entire planet saying, please, somebody come back us up. And I don't know if it's we as in we the country or, or we as in our leadership and its ability to, and I'm not trying to diss it, but at the same time, you know, a lot of people are frowning upon, you know, what we've done militarily since uh, leaving the other country that begins with A. Basically, you're saying, like, we're not trying to offend the, the President B supporters here, but everybody, the entire planet agrees that this whole Afghan thing was just absolutely horrid. And it's so bad that I don't see how people would think, like, not question if it was on purpose or something is going on here. I don't know, but... It says, uh, speaking at the presidential office uh, to the French senators led by the former defense minister, Aline Richard, uh, Aline, uh, Tsai thanked France for its concern about the situation in the Taiwan Strait and support for its international uh, participation. It says, Richard discussed the essential contribution of Taiwan in the important field of human progress but did not mention the rising military tensions with China in remarks carried uh, live by the presidential office's FB page. 
Well, of course not, right? It said Tsai gave a similar message in later remarks to Abbott, who told her he was in Taiwan to help end its international isolation, praising its democracy and handling the CV demic, right? And then it says, of course, not everyone and not everywhere is pleased at Taiwan's progress. Uh, and I do note that Taiwan is challenged on almost a daily basis by its giant neighbor, Abbott said. It says the French senators arrived in Taiwan on Wednesday, despite the strong objections of China, which is always angered by visits of foreign officials because they consider that an invasion. That's like they're not checking in with daddy first. Right. So check this out. This is where it gets really crazy here. U.S. troops have been deployed in Taiwan for at least a year. Now, this has come out. This is the big this is the big story here because uh, China just found out this or supposedly just found out this and that they consider as an invasion. That's they consider this already. We've invaded them or, or intruded their country because they own Taiwan. Right. And, and do you recall, I think we reported this about four weeks ago. Uh, I think it was a senator had put out a tweet and said, we have troops in oh! this country, troops in that country, troops in that country. And he said, Taiwan. And then he had to retract it and everybody had to go freak out and because China was mad. They're like, you have troops over there? And and he's like, oh, no, it was, a, it was a mistake. I didn't mean it. But the guy was on the, you know, the committee. He would know like he was uh, armed services committee or something like that. So, yeah. So we had this a little while back. We had this a month ago. Right. Because we were following closely this this tweet, this uh, the, the so that whatever it was, a senator, right? Somebody said. Yeah, it was somebody who had intelligence who worked on. One oh, of the my God. I'd have to go look it up. It, I can't remember. You who know it was, what? But it's, yeah, he tweeted it. It's on my thumbnail. His his tweet is on my thumbnail a month ago. And it shows that, uh, of course, Taiwan had twenty five hundred or twenty five thousand or something. Twenty five hundred sounds more like it. And that list, people go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then he had to retract that. The whole country made a big deal out of it. So it turns out that it was right. And we knew it, right? They, oh, it was a typo or, oh, that would, you know, that's not. Well, that what that means is they're saying that since they are getting the whole world to just admit that, you know, it's Taiwan's may not be under control right this second, but it will be, and it's going to be ours, and we're going to take it. It's an, it, it, it's an eventual thing. It's going to happen. Whether you guys like it or not, we'll go to conflict over it. We'll take it forcefully, and we're planning on it. And they're doing it every day. They're in their practice. They're doing practice runs. They have made a full-scale uh, copy, a whole area of uh, Taiwan's main area, right? Their the cap area of it. They have made it full-scale and practice taking it on a daily basis. And they've, uh, I've heard that you can see it from satellite, uh, that it's, it is, uh, massive now. So they've copied the whole area. They have special forces training to take over that area. So this pissed them off. It says a U.S. special operations unit and a contingent of Marines have been covertly working in Taiwan to train military forces, parts of efforts to increase uh, the island's defense system as potential Chinese aggression mounts. It says ne nearly two dozen members of the special operations troops are conducting training for small units of Taiwan ground forces, a U.S. official said, per the Wall Street Journal. <clears throat> It says the Marines are working with the local maritime forces on small boat training and have been doing so for at least a year. The deployment comes amid concern over Taiwan's defense capabilities and China's recent threatening moves against the island. Indeed, Taiwan and U.S. officials have expressed concern over nearly 150 flights near Taiwan in the last week by Chinese military aircraft, including J-16 jet fighters, H-6 strategic boomers, and YT, uh, I'm sorry, Y-8 submarine spotting aircraft. While they haven't entered Taiwanese airspace, the Chinese uh, flights serve as a reminder that the Chinese view of Taiwan as a part of their country. Chao Ku Chang, uh, Taiwan's defense minister, warned Wednesday that China would be able to launch a full-fledged attack on Taiwan with minimal losses by 2025 there's that 2025 again 
But others are saying, 2025, are you smoking crack? They said, this is going to happen in the next couple months. China fires back at reports of U.S. commandos in Taiwan. China has previously indicated that it would retaliate swiftly and immediately to any indication that U.S. had deployed military forces in Taiwan. Uh, Leaders almost immediately expressed outrage Thursday at a new report indicating that the U.S. secretly stationed forces there in Taiwan in an attempt to bolster the island's nation defenses against the increasing likelihood of an attack from the mainland. So what what it was just said, this is a quote. So it it says, uh, Special Operations Forces have been based in Taiwan for at least a year to train local military forces, a move China has previously said would violate contentious agreements between Washington and Beijing that have maintained fragile security understanding regarding Taiwan for decades. Asian outlets first reported last year that the possible presence of Marines were there. It says, quote, why just two dozen members? Why secretly? The U.S. should send 240 servicemen publicly in U.S. military uniform and make public where they are stationed. Hu Jin, the editor-in-chief of China's English uh, language Global Times, one of their uh, one of their actual mouthpiece, considered the mouthpiece of the Chinese party, wrote in a tweet accompanying the journal's article, he added, of China's military. See whether the PLA will launch a targeted airstrike to eliminate those U.S. invaders. Now, that statement, by the way, had to be approved by the Chinese government. So Chinese government actually physically approved that statement before it was released. China has previously indicated that it would retaliate swiftly and immediately to any indication that the U.S. had any troops there. One troop. So another part of this is if they don't react or do something or say harsh words, then they look bad. They actually look bad to their country because they're letting something slide. And this isn't like NK. NK will talk all day. China does do, you know, they they uh, they back up what they say. So we might see some sort of retaliation, if not physical, then most definitely they're going to come out with some sort of uh, terror for something But who knows? Maybe they can't do that right now because of their situation. It said Republican uh, out of Texas, John Corrin, claimed without explanation in August that the U.S. roughly had 30,000 forces on Taiwan. State news in Beijing fired back that if true, the Chinese military would crush them by force. So it was 20 it was it wasn't 25,000 it was 30,000 it wasn't 2500 it was 30,000 troops are in uh Taiwan right now and I believe what he's saying I believe that's actually correct What do you think Dex Well at least we know now there's somebody there um we don't know exactly how many uh other than they're admitting or somebody's admitting a, a few dozen or a dozen but uh, you know, it's somewhere between those two numbers, and you know, Corwin would know. He's you know has the ability to know where where our troops are. Um, he did pull back that tweet, and he did say, "I didn't mean it," but I don't know. Probably some sort of slip. There's there's something going on, and and this, like you said, this would be the type of uh, of action that would cause an event to fire off immediately from China. So I assume they're sitting on the edge of their seat ready to do something. Now, uh, a couple really good comments here. So, uh, by the way, Canadian Wolverine, thanks for your support. Open House Texas says, hi, Adam and Dex. Just remembering, during WW2, rationing was an indication of war. This could be some kind of preparation. Sorry, I got here late. You guys might have mentioned this. Uh, no, but that is true. And that that's actually what I kind of said last night with the whole uh, of the scrapping of the metal and why it was so weirdly sold. These two huge uh, aircraft carriers were sold for two pennies. We're not even kidding about that. Two actual literal pennies. They sold it to this company so they could get rid of the stuff and, and recycle the metal. Right. Do we need all that metal? Is that is that why they're doing this weird kind of two cent thing? I don't I don't get it. Uh 
And then L Lucid Farms, thanks for your support. Uh, thank you. That your support is seriously appreciated. Uh, could there be Chinese weapons and or military or drones in their those containers offshore, all stacking up and waiting for the go? Lucid Farms, we have mentioned that, you know, again, there's the container-based weapons. And over the last five years, we've even heard uh, that officials have said that it is an alarming amount that have been manufactured in China. They saw them testing it via satellite photos, and they said that they've never seen so many container-related uh, weapons as they did when they, they, they uh, saw these satellite f footage of all these containers. Somebody else said that those containers could be uh, transferring uh, humans, right? Troops. That would also be a possibility. That they could be used as housing units uh, with proper ventilation and, you know, proper storage. I mean, uh, people live in those containers. People use those containers for their homes. Uh, even one is big enough. One of the bigger ones is big enough to house you know, I mean, technically, if you squeezed in tight, you could fit in all sorts of stuff. You could fit in food and a way to cook it. Uh, you could fit in at least, who who knows, I, I at least 10 people. I would think you could fit 100 people in standing room, but it depends on how long they would have to be in there. Everyone should meditate on the word eternity. Think of the meaning of that word, narrow gate. Uh, I think it's a beautiful word, and uh, I get what you're saying. Catherine Wilson says, God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, Delaware Sasquatch says, if anyone questions warnings of a toy shortage, go to your local Walmart, typically stocked for the layaway season. A lot of empty spaces on shelves. So Delaware Sasquatch, um, I know friends that, again, one of my friends even owns a business kind of reselling popular toys. And when he finds a good one, you know, like it's called on, Entourage or on, uh uh, what what is it entourage entourage he finds the popular ones and then he sells them for more i mean some call it scalping but he does it on a small scale uh he you know basically all of the the walmart's every store has empty shelves in uh certain departments and it's always the departments that have stuff from china and it's only gotten worse it's really bad uh okay drummer yeah, the got the other way Go ahead. Sorry, Adam. I was going to say the other thing you can notice, and I just saw this for ourselves, you can't find uh, Halloween decorations. Well, you can, but they're like scarce. It's not like, you know, usually this time of the season, like in October, you know, the shelves are stocked up with, you know, Halloween this, Halloween that. And you know, it's all trinkety kind of stuff that's cheaply made. And it's, it's from China. 99% of it's coming from China. There's nothing. You can't find it. You probably find in like last year's inventory that was stuck in the warehouse that so didn't sell, right? You know, and matter of fact, they're pushing up all the, the Christmas stuff now because they don't, you know, like I'm thinking like, you know, um, you know, those different crafty type stores and stuff. They're they're moving all that stuff in because they don't have anything to stock. Well, um, you know, and maybe more Christmas stuff is made in the United States because I don't know. Uh, they probably I probably have more of that in the warehouse from last year, I'm sure, than Halloween. But yeah, there's just it's it's obvious oh, true. everything is is just well what's weird is i saw i saw uh it w the local target was just packed with halloween stuff but then after the first day it was empty so it's like they did have a good amount to make it look good now it's empty shelves so they had enough for like basically one day of sales unless they're waiting on more trucks we'll see but i i bet you i bet you're you're right you're not going to see uh halloween decorations costumes all of those things are made in china especially those cheap costumes that every main you know retail store sells they're all just absolutely horrid quality uh made by children somewhere uh scooby-doo do right thank you remember no matter where you go there you are so be good to each other thank you cognitable uh scooby-doo do right team jesus wins Queen B2B says, thank you for keeping me informed for four months. Maui Ray, uh, Racing Realtor, thank you for being here. Cheryl from Daytona, JFN57. Maui, I don't think you've missed a show. Thank you for being here pretty much every night. I really appreciate that. Uh, Groatness, if you can, make sure if you found value in today's show to uh, put a like on that channel. You know, I... I think it's crazy that we have usually on average about 50,000 people watch every single day and usually it's only about 3,000 to 5,000 likes 
if you do really appreciate the the uh, videos that we put out, make sure to do that. Uh, show them that you like it, unless they're secretly taking them away or something. Uh, James Fox, again, thank you for your support today. Will Wilson, we want to fight each other. Meanwhile, Mother Earth is pissed off. So which is going to go down? Can't we have it both ways? Uh, and then Seth Covington, thank you for the massive support. That is huge. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank you and mods need a beer, LOL. Uh, the mods have been having uh, just a couple days of just craziness, but honestly, uh, that's a good thing. You know, the more that people come in here and if they do end up coming in here being negative, uh, even that person that just said that thing earlier, I hope that people can like not get triggered by stuff and then try to uh, welcome people in and try to realize that, you know, not everybody is going to think the same here. But also to, you know, people are, you know, it's kicking the cat. If you don't know what kicking the cat is, ask somebody. Uh, thank you, Scooby Doo Do Right, for the Ninja Genie over on D Live. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and then Hash Sling and Slasher says, Hang in there, everyone. We have to be each other's support system. You guys should understand that when you support the other people in the actual chat, when you're gifting subs, uh, thank you, Hash Slash and Slinger, uh, Cheryl from Daytona. Also realize that you guys should be uh, pushing each other up. And when you're in other chat rooms and when you, you see each other in other places, make sure to push each other up. It, it, you should be able to come here and unwind after work and have a free space to just relax. None of this stuff should uh, scare you if you're getting prepared for it. Uh, Dex, we have really disgusting stuff at the bottom of the page here. Do you want to go over that real quick? <laughs> yeah. So look, go to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, scroll down to web-only content, or if you want a shortcut, just go to the description on YouTube and click that first link right there. It'll take you to today's show notes where you can see all the articles we just talked about, but more so get to the web only content where you can get the rest of the story. Lots of things going on, some stuff with your everyone's favorite doctor, um, some new leaks and whistleblower information that are out there. Um, a little bit of stuff on the bean counters and plenty of polit political uh, stuff being thrown around. Go take a look, but uh, also a really crazy video uh, that came out um, that is also on there about potentially some sort of hybrid. So um, you be the judge, and there's an article there you can go read it to and see if you think this is real or not. But marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, scroll down and look for web-only content and get the rest of the story. Uh, so basically, if it was true, the person that people were, you know, making fun of uh, would pretty much be 10 and 10 for like everything they said would happen and everything that was going on, uh, including a video that was posted uh, about a month ago of a video posted right before all of this stuff went down, uh, describing exactly what was going to go down. It was pretty crazy. So uh, AJ over there putting out some craziness and. It's just when he says it, it sounds crazy. Like, Rawr, human pig, blah, blah, blah. Apparently, though, it might be a thing. Uh, some, you know, some never doubted. Uh, and then, yeah, that's just craziness. Thank you. A uh, special thank you to Cynthia Lind uh, this week for supporting. Gone Girl 777, praying for you wherever you are. Uh, Amy, uh, Amy R., thank you so much for uh, being this year's top supporter. And then, of course, Susan Donahue, thank you so much as well. I know you guys will end up watching the replay at some point. We are praying for you all, and thank you guys for being part of the Fugle Fam. Make sure to put an M in the chat right now for your mods who have had to deal with anything unfavorable tonight. Uh, they make this a peaceful and awesome time. Uh, again, I think it's really important to keep everybody positive. Um, I We usually forgive and forget on most things and just keep it rolling as long as you're pushing each other up and not putting anybody else down you should be fine that's the thing uh, when you come in and say that's stupid or you're stupid or this or that that's not okay technically even what that person said it's like you know that's not um, if you want to believe that then go ahead uh, but don't press it on other people 
Uh, let's see here. Basically, you have the choice. You have the choice to be here or not be here. Dex, uh, thank you uh, for your help tonight. Uh, there was a couple people that uh, you wanted us to say thank you to. Joanna H., thank you for going over and uh, going over to PayPal. Uh, then we have Rhonda B., thank you so much for your support over there. Karen W., uh, thank you as well. And then Melanie H. says, please prep for the winner, Fugle Fam. Thanks for all your hard work you put into the show, Marf and Dex. Love and hugs to the Fugle Fam. Hey, Melanie H., thank you for supporting and thank you for supporting Dex. Uh, again, a little bit of everything. Thank you so much for su supporting as well. All right, Dex, have a great night. I love you. Uh, much love. Great we, show. We will be back tomorrow. We've got some big plans for this next week, so stick around. It is now time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro.